So, how did your paths cross with Bart? Like I said, I wanted John Lilly beside me because it was actually him that came to me. I bought Skip Furlow's late model in 1984. That was a Gundacker chassis. I had Brad Clark drive it in 84. Midway through the season, the motor blew up. I'm done. <laughs> Well, one of our friends, Jim Seeley, come to me and he says that John Lilly would like to get hold of me. So me and John Lilly got hooked up on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. He says, listen, he says, uh, I'd like to lease your car. We put our motor in it and run it the rest of the year. We'll give you a percentage of what the car brings in. I says, fine, let's go. We went up to the house, picked it up, down to go tire we go. Pull the motor out of Martin Sportsman, which at that time John Lilly, Delbert Seekins, and Gary Zepka owned it. Well, to nobody else's knowing, me and John pulled the motor out of the Sportsman, stuck it in the late model. <laughs> Everybody come to the garage that night to go racing. They said, what's this? We're going late model racing. And that was what John Lilly said. We're going late model racing. That night we went to Erie, he ran second to Jimmy Polero, and that was the beginning of the end. We just kept on going and going and going and going. It was a real good relationship. John Lilly is actually the man that put Dick in his first late model ride when John Lilly come to me, and that was it. 92 maybe, 93, somewhere around there. One of the premier drivers that I've ever had acquaintance with, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Bobby Snars, what can be said about Bobby Snars, you know? But Dick, Dick was a, a heck of a wheel man. He treated our car like, he took care of our car. He know he knew if, if if he wadded it up, where are we going to get the money to fix this thing, you know? And that's where his mom came into this. His mother, Olita, played an intricate part in the 14B. We bought a used, uh, oh my God, now I can't think of what it was, Gertie Motor. Okay, we put it in the car. Wasn't right. Took it out to Gertie's in Rochester, Indiana. Me and my wife did. We wanted, we wanted it right, so we spent a ton of money. Back then, a ton of money was a ton of money to us, you know. Went and picked it up. Put it in. We went to, we went to motor drone. Four laps, and that motor grenaded. It just took and literally destroyed the motor. Mrs. Barton stepped up to the plate. Here, this is my part of the thing, she says. Olita was an intricate part of Dick's success, and our success, you know. And I cherish the ground that that woman ever walked at. Sweet lady. And I'm sure the rest of them would say the same thing. But that's... That's the way it started in 1984. 85, he won the championship. 86, most of our cars were Barry Wrights. We had a lot of success with Barry Wrights. For example, in 86, we was a threat wherever we went. I mean, they had a bounty on us in 86. <laughs> they really did. Because we were, I mean, that was the best year that we ever had. Up until that point, we were unstoppable. And when the chassis builder come to Dirt State Line for the, I think it was an outlaw show, we paid 10000 to win, and we waxed the boys up there. You know, had the chassis builder come over to us and say congratulations and stuff. That meant a lot, meant a lot to us, sure. you know. And of course, we had the party. <laughs> you know, it would, and like I said, another part of this 
would have not been possible without John Lamb, Warren McDonald, Jim Seeley, anybody that ever turned a wrench on the car, my hat's off to them. They actually paid my bills. You know what I'm, you know how I'm, what I'm insinuating, you know, the man, Barton did a fantastic job for us. What can I say? Yeah, there was a couple of them. Like I said, that night we went up at State Line, and that was the Outlaw Show. That was 1986. And then uh, at Sharon Speedway, when we ran there, we was running three nights a week. Sometimes four, sometimes five nights a week. And at Sharon Speedway, we actually did the boys up up there, Donnie Moran, you know, all the big, big stars. We we dusted them, you know, and that that's a feather in your hat being a local, you know, local organization, and that that'll always remember, you know. And then Franny too, when we won that ten thousand dollars, he'll tell rest of the guys will tell you that he paid us in every denomination known to man. <laughs> I, sw I swear to God. Me and Delbert, which was one of the co-owners with me, we brought it back to the house. That's where the car was more or less based at, was at my house. We sat down, him, me, and my wife sat there and counted it. Pennies, nickels, dimes, every denomination known to man. <laughs> so we got even with Franny the next, way, next week we paid our way in with pennies. <laughs> You know, we had fun. I mean, it was a fun thing. But everybody, you know, everybody, what can you say? I mean, we was dedicated to it. We were married to it. Every night, seven days a week, we'd be out there. If we wasn't racing, other people would make it. How come my car, my car finished seventh? And all there is is the battery charger in it. You guys won the night before, and you got the thing in a million pieces. Preventative maintenance, I guess. We very rarely broke, but when we broke, we broke. And like I, I'm just grateful that I was a part of this, you know. And for Dick to do the accomplishments that he's done is unreal. We had a ball. A lot of beer drinking, let's put it that way. That's the rumor, I don't know. Oh, there was a lot of beer drinking. Half a keg of beer in the, at the garage and only lasted two nights. <laughs> it was just that way. We'd get done working on our car. Actually, we'd come here. This back then was a PDQ. We'd come up here, Bob Dietrich owned it at the time. and We'd come up here and have dead birds, we called them, chicken wings, you know. And just. I have a ball. Dick was always this type of guy in the pits, put his fire suit on. Let's go get a hot dog. We go get a hot dog. I forgot my money. Left it in my other pants. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this has been terrific. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I just, like I said, uh, my hat's off to Dick and Ron Nielsen and the Lackey boys. He finally accomplished what he wanted. That's, that makes me happy. Well,